Ah, shoot. <clears throat> the real YouTube is sing the intro in a deeper voice than is normally sung. Hmm. Sorry, I was focusing on singing, so then the drawing went slower. Hello! What's going on? It's your boy, Mewtwo. Um, so today, we're going to be ranking the Pokemon rivals. You might be saying, Wolf, why? And I say, I don't know, we're just going to do it, alright? Don't ask questions if, 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 okay? Just don't do it. Um, so there I was, uh, looking through the teams for these rivals. I haven't decided anything, um, totally set in stone yet, but I was really surprised. A lot of the characters, like, I feel like are either super iconic, like... Um, like, Blue or May, um, and I feel like a lot of them, honestly, a lot, like, well, we'll get to that later. I feel like Gen, Gen 6 kinda, I was not super, I, like, couldn't have told you the names of beforehand. Um, but yeah, anyway, okay, so let's talk about this. Um, so, the plan is to rank the rivals based on how good they would be at competitive Pokemon. Obviously, like, when you're ranking in-game stuff, and looking at, like, in-game actual, like, characters and stuff... A lot of the difficulty relative to the player is based on things like levels and like how much higher level they are than you and um, availability of moves and stuff like that. Um, so this is a very different approach than how hard they are to play in game. Additionally, because we're talking about them, uh, how good they are competitively, we're going to be talking about the official competitive format, which is doubles. So maybe a Pokemon that's really good in singles isn't good in doubles. I always, I always try to give these disclaimers and every time I get comments that are like, actually... Toxapex is really good. You do I can't believe you're putting an E tier. It's such a good Pokemon. You're a noob. And it's like, yes, in singles, Toxapex is good, but it's not good in doubles. Anyway, I'll get many comments about how... Empoleon's so good. No, it's not. Okay, anyway, we're going to go through by generation. These are sorted alphabetically, so we'll go in a different order. Um, the first rival is blue. Additionally, we're going to be trying to talk about the... Um, about the the trainers in relative to their like the meta games they would play in. So for example, Blue is playing in a meta game with only Gen One Pokemon. Um, we've talked about Blue I think before. He's got Executor, Gyarados, Charizard, Rhydon, Alakazam, and Pidgeot. Um, especially for these early Pokemon as well, we're gonna not gonna ignore the we're gonna ignore the moves in my opinion. Um, because yeah, like those could be changed. But we're assuming everyone's playing in Gen Eight, but the rules are uh, the same rules. Like, the, the rule set is, is different. So, for example, like, Blue would have access to G-Max Charizard, um, but would not have access to, like, I don't know, Rhyperior. Um, but Rhydon could hold Eviolite. But every, and everyone else would have to use Gen 1 Pokemon as well. So, looking at Blue's team, he's got, some like, a couple really good things. Um, Executor is a great Pokemon. It's got a runner-up at the World Championships and a runner-up at the National Championships. Um, one of my personal favorite Pokemon. He's got the nice Fire, Water, Grass core, which is kind of famous in Pokemon. Additionally, even though he has two electric weaknesses, he actually has Rhydon, who has Lightning Rod as well. Um, which is really, really strong, not gonna lie. Uh, and with access to G-Max Charizard, like, I think this team would be actually really good. Alakazam is relatively fast as well. I think it's base 110, or maybe it's base 130, I always forget. Um, you could probably run, like, Focus Ash, Alakazam, Lumberry, or Assault Vest, or Life Orb, Gyarados, Citrus Berry, Executor... Mm, some kind of Charizard, uh, unclear, maybe Goggles, Eevee Light Repair, or right on, and then Pidgeot, I don't really know, maybe Scarf if it gets Tailwind, I don't actually know, because I, I don't even know if Pidgeot's in the game, I don't think it is, yeah, maybe Tailwind Pidgeot could be interesting, um, yeah, Rhydon's gonna be the, like, the, the, kind of the glue of the defensive backbone of this team, because it's physically bulky and pairs really well with, like, Gyarados, um, and more importantly, it could soak up the electric type weaknesses of the three flying type Pokemon, and the rock weakness of, uh, the two, the three flying type Pokemon as well. So, overall, I think this is a great team. Um, Alakazam, like, the speeds are nicely spread out. You have Executor, who could be Trick Room, though you don't really benefit that much from Trick Room, but with Executor Rhydon, you have something there. Um, you have, like, Alakazam and Charizard, who are relatively fast. Garrett is for Intimidate, or Moxie, and then Pidgeot's just filler. Um, but yeah, overall, I think this team is actually pretty good. I know we've ranked Blue before, I don't remember where we put him last time. I, I'm thinking, like, he might be an S-tier pick, not gonna lie. His team looks really solid, given the generation, like... Sure, you could have a couple better Pokemon here, but, like, not that many more, you know? So, let's put him in S tier. Next up, we have Trace, who's in Let's Go. Um, I never played Let's Go, so... Uh, but I think it's interesting he has a bounty. $18,000 just for beating this little kid, so that's kind of messed up, but... Um, yeah, so Trace has Raichu, Slowbro, Rapidash, Marowak, Vileplume, and Pidgeot as well. So, we've got two Pidgeot. Um, this team's alright. Like, you have some good Pokemon, like Raichu and Slowbro. Uh, and even Marowak is pretty good in Trick Room. Like, you can do Trick Room Slowbro with um, Thick Club Marowak. Because Marowak actually gets super hard. Um, which is interesting. You have, like, the the semblance of a Sun team here. With, like, Vileplume and Rapidash. But 
no easy way to set sun. Um, I guess you could Dynamax Rapidash and, like, yeah, do something there, which is actually kind of interesting. Uh, Pidgeot, with its Mega Stone, is interesting. However, there's no Mega Evolution in the current generation, and, yeah, that kind of hurts it. Um, the speeds are okay as well. Like, Rapidash and Raichu are really fast. Pidgeot is... Actually, I think slow. Mega Pidgeot's fast, but I think Regular Pidgeot's slow. Um, Vile Plume is mid-speed tier, like, to slow her, but can boost its speed in the sun. And then, um, Marowak and Slowbro are slow and work under Trick Room. I think it's fine. Like, uh, it's not as good as Blue's team, in my opinion. Like, I expect that these two trainers played that you, I would probably give the edge to Blue, for sure. But it's not a terrible team, either. I think for that reason, let's, we're gonna put it in the... If I can find him, wait. Where is he? Am I an idiot? Where is he? Did I lose him? Hang on. Oh, there. Wait, he's there. I saw him. You know what? He looks like a jet. Oh. Wait, what? What just happened? He's not even in this one. I think what happens... Okay, we're going to take a little... We can, we'll just take a little interlude. We're going to have to remake the template. It should be fine. Um, sorry. Um, so I think what happens is if you name your tier list the same thing as an existing tier list and you go to edit it, it will overwrite it. Like, it doesn't have a way of... Okay, I can see that he's here. It doesn't have a way of, like, differentiating between... Um, doesn't matter. It doesn't have a way of differentiating between things that are the same name, I think. So it just gave me someone else's tier list. Sorry about that. Um... I'm gonna put him in the B tier. I think he's, it's like fine. His Pokemon are decent. Um, you can't like if you if you had his team in a Gen One only meta game, you wouldn't feel terrible. But like yeah, like Rapidash isn't strong. Vileplume isn't super strong offensively. Um, Pidgeot isn't strong offensively, defensively. Pidgeot's not strong in any sense of the word. Um, um, Raichu's good support, but you have to be supporting Pokemon. And also Marowak plus. Hello. <clears throat> we're gonna do it. We're doing it live. Please? I have... Dude, this site is actually super geeking out. It's freaking out. I guess we can just continue while we wait for this to, to process. But yeah. Like I said, the, the double lightning rod is actually kind of... Like, the first lightning rod is good, although it only protects these two. Which is... I mean, not bad. Um, but the second lightning rod actually gets in the way. Like, Raichu's lightning rod... Or Marek's lightning rod gets in the way of Raichu. Like, they don't work well together, in my opinion. Um, so he's a B tier, in my opinion. Sorry, hopefully that works. Silver is the next one. This is our first Johto trainer. Uh, Gengar and Alakazam are two very fast Pokemon. Sneasel is actually pretty good in, in this uh, metagame as well, because you know, there's no Weavile. Um, okay, please. Okay, cool. Blue, S tier, Trace, B tier. Cool, moving on. Silver, interesting team. Um, you could have uh, Meganium or Typhlosion here as well. Uh, Sneasel, Crobat, Magneton, Gengar, Alakazam, and Feraligatr. I don't hate this team. Um... Magneton's a good Pokemon. Uh, Alakazam and Gengar are both fast and offensive. They're, but the problem is they both pull on Focus Ash. Feraligatr is solid. Um, like, it's a decent Pokemon, I guess. Not great, but yeah. You could maybe do stuff with, like, Sneasel, Feraligatr. Um, Crobat's good support. The real issue here is that there's, like, the offensive Pokemon being Sneasel, Gengar, and Alakazam. Like, the very, the fast offensive Pokemon are all very frail and all with the Focus Ash. Uh, and also, like, Crobat normally uses it with, like, a mid-speed tier team to get like very fast tailwind and then go zoom however like on this team you don't really need to excuse me the speed control as much because um your pokemon already should already be outspeeding everything like four of your pokemon should outspeed like all of your opponent's pokemon most of the time i think um magnetron is like mid speed but also can run scarf often will run scarf um evil is not a great item on it and then i guess like for alligator benefits from tailwind but like yeah um also like the psychic and ghost being your main offensive types here are not it's not amazing, I'll be completely honest. Um, primarily because, like, Dark resists both of them, and, like, you don't really have an easy way through Dark types on this team. Like, Sneasel, Gengar, and Alakazam, like, all can't hit Dark types. And Tyranitar is in this metagame. It's a Gen 2 Pokemon, so, like, if you played against a Tyranitar, if it has, like, a fighting move and dual stabs, it hits every Pokemon on your team minus Feraligatr. And you can't really do that much in, like, return except for, like, hit Focus Blast, which isn't great. And if they Dynamax, like, you'd probably guarantee you'd lose. So, um... For that reason, I think this is a C-tier team. Like, it's not terrible. Um, however, yeah, like, it's not good either. Uh, like, it has some good Pokemon, but, like, the overall synergy is bad. May is next. So, actually, you never actually fight May or Brandon in the final. Brandon? Brandon? I don't remember. Um, 
you never actually fight them in the final version of um, uh, Ruby Sapphire, I think, or that's what I was told at least. So this is their um, Omega Ruby Alpha Sapphire final squad. Um, Berloon, Blaziken, they can have the other starters as well, Raichu, Wailord, and Swellow. Um, it's an interesting team for sure. They only have five Pokemon, which is interesting. Um... I think it could be okay. Like, it's not amazing. Um, however, with Raiju, you get, like, very, and Swellow, you get very fast speed control. So Raiju can nuzzle and Swellow can tailwind, which supports Wailord somewhat well. Um, Breloom also benefits a lot from, like, speed control, though you'd need to use tailwind there because Breloom is primarily going to be running, like, Focus Sash and Spore um, most of the time. Or you can run Life Orb Bolt Seed as well or Mach Punch, but normally Focus Sash Spore is good. Um, yeah. It sucks that they only have five Pokemon, because the sixth one would kind of determine the dynamic of this team. But they do have Fire, Water, Grass, which is good. Uh, Blaziken is also, like, a decent... Like, it's not amazing by any means in doubles, but, like, I don't know. It's it's okay, at the very least. And, like, you could definitely do some, like, Raichu Blaziken stuff, like, Fake Out, Attack. Um, I guess there's no Mega Blaziken, but you can Dynamax Blaziken, so that kind of makes up for it. And get more bulk and stuff. You could actually do, like, Surf Raichu, and then have... <laughs> um... You could have Absorb Bulb, Wailord, and Weakness Policy, Blaziken, so you get, like, you could Surf and then get Special Attack Boost regardless, that'd be kind of funny. Um, yeah, and I think mo on this team, most of the time you're Dynamaxing Blaziken, though of course you could do Wailord as well, but yeah, I think most of the time you're doing Blaziken. Um, Speed Boost Blaziken's okay, like, or like, it's good, it's okay, well, it's, it's okay in doubles, I would say. Um, yeah, this team really lacks bulk, like, if they play, if Trick Room goes up, I think they just lose. Um, but the offense is okay, I think it's slightly better than Silver's team, so I'm gonna put it in the B tier. Where's May? Next up, we have Wally. Um, Wally has Rosary. Oh, this is from Alpha Sapphire. Or, or oh my god, Ruby Alpha Sapphire. Okay, yeah, so this is the remake version of Wally's team. Um, Rosary, Talonflame, Azumarill, Magnezone, Garchomp, and Glade. Now, this is a good team. There's a lot of really good things like happening here. You have Fairy, Dragon, Steel, which is uh, a solid core. You have Fire, Water, Grass, which is a very solid core. Um, you have Azumarill, who's a great Pokemon. Um, you don't really have, like, Follow Me stuff here, but, like, you have Sleep Powder and Tailwind support, so you could run, like, Life Orb Azumarill and hit super hard, or Choice Band Azumarill and hit super hard. You could run Belly Drum if you thought you had the support for it. You could even use, like, an Azumarill and Trick Room with Trick Room Gallade. Um, Talonflame offering, like, fast priority Tailwind is very good. Um, you could also, like, I, nobody, since Talonflame is not in the meta game, people haven't really explored with it, but, like, you could, in theory, do, like, Weakness Policy Talonflame, I think, or maybe just Dynamax Talonflame, and that kind of makes up for the loss, like, its lack of power um, a lot of the time. Rosary is a good Pokemon. You get Sleep Powder with that. Um, Sleep Powder, Focus Sash, Roserade, Garchomp's a great Pokemon with Dynamax. I think this is overall a good team. Like, it lacks in bulk a little bit. Magnezone's good for trapping Steel types, though honestly on this team you're not really afraid of Steel types with Talonflame, Garchomp, and Gallade. Um, yeah, I guess you could also do Sturdy Magnezone. Yeah, overall I think it's a good team. Like, it's, a, it's an overall solid team. I don't think it's, like, the best you could build, but I, I think, like, like... Oh, that's not, that's not right. Um, sorry. Where is he? Yeah. I think, I think it's it's good. It's definitely good. Like, you wouldn't be upset with this team. The, like, even though on paper it might look better than Blue's team, um, the fact is that the relative... In, in this game, you have all seven generations of Pokemon, and, like, this is definitely missing some crucial things. Like, this... It will be... Other than Azumarill and maybe Magnezone, if Trick Room goes up, it's going to be very difficult for this team to handle. Which, to be fair, is probably true a lot of the rivals' teams, you know. Um, however, yeah, given the relative metagame, I think that, like, this team, this team is good, but not amazing. Next up, we have Barry, who has a cool team. He's got uh, Staraptor, Floatzel, Roserade, Heracross, Snorlax, and Infernape. So you got some interesting things here. You have Fake Out Infernape plus Snorlax uh, or Staraptor. This is a fast team. It also has Roserade. Um, Roserade is, uh, like I said, a good Pokemon to have Focus Ash and Sleep Powder on. Floatzel is not amazing. It doesn't really do very much. Um, Staraptor and Hera Staraptor, I feel like the good Pokemon here are Staraptor, Snorlax, and Infernape and Roserade. Those are all good. Heracross is like mid tier, and then Floatzel is probably bad. Um, you probably wouldn't do anything interesting with Floatzel outside of, like, using it to maybe do a surprise weakness policy thing, though I don't really know what that would be. Um, oh, excuse me, or maybe using it to deal with rain teams, like using Swift Swim, and if it gets Sunny Day, or... I don't know, maybe you can have some anti-rain team tech here. Um, yeah. Heracross isn't amazing, however, like, with Tailwind and with Moxie... Yeah, you could do some interesting things, actually, with Tailwind. You know, Heracross might actually be good when it comes back. Because you could Dynamax your Heracross and set Tailwind with Staraptor. And then, like, if you get a KO, you get an attack boost. So you could launch Max Knuckles and potentially get, like, two attack boosts in a turn if you KO something. Which would be kind of wild. And you can use, like, Max Bug to lower the opponent's special attack. Heracross actually could be interesting with Dynamax. Um, and Snorlax can do some cool stuff. You could hit people with Surprise Factor. Um, like, Choice Band Explosion stuff. Or you can be Belly Drum. Um, 
The other getting nerfed definitely hurts it a bit, but yeah. Oh, you can also just use it to like handle sun teams like with thick fat. This is Gen 4 that he plays in, so um, yeah, sun isn't as problematic, I think. I, overall, I think this is a good team. I think this is probably, probably an A-tier team, in my opinion. Okay, cool. Moving on. Uh, next up, we have Charon. Turns out Charon, if you have an O, is a totally different person. Uh, Charon plays in a Gen 5 exclusive metagame. He has some pretty bad Pokemon, but he has some good Pokemon as well. Uh, I felt like Superior is the strongest version of his team, so I chose it. Uh, Lipard, Simipore, Unfazant, Jigalith, Haxorus, and Superior. So this team, I think, is, like, overall solid. The thing is that, like, if it weren't for the two terrible Pokemon in Unfazant and Simipore, it would be a lot better. Feels kind of loud. Um, but we have some good things here. Lipard Superior is actually really interesting to me because you can do two things. You can do, f well, you can use Fake Tears and Fake Out to do two things. The first is, um, you can, if you have Contrary Superior, which is the hidden ability, which is released, um, you can use Leaf Storm to raise your special attack by two stages every time you click it, being, like, actually really, really dangerous. Like, if you ignore a Superior and let it set up, it can just, like, totally go to town. Um, and you can pair that with Fake Tears Lipard, and that does two things. The first is, like, you can lower your opponent's special defense, and then, like, immediately have a, you know, double power Leaf Storm, or... You can use it on Superior and raise your special defense two stages thanks to Contrary, reversing the effects of stat changes. So that's actually a really powerful synergy in my opinion. And with Fake Out, like, obviously it'd be better without Dynamax. Like, if Dynamax wasn't a thing, because Fake Out is, like, a lot weaker. But I still think you can do some interesting things. Um, you also have Jigalith, which is good against Trick Room, and Haxorus, which is good for, like, setup um, stuff. Oh, excuse me. <sighs> oh, that was a big yawn. Um, but, like I said, Simipore and Umphazon are pretty terrible. The thing is, though, that, like, that this metagame, you'd be playing only Gen 5, which is, like, it changes things, you know? Like, you're not going to have as much Trick Room. Um, there's no Legendaries here, so we're not sure if they're allowed. I don't know. I think it's probably, like, a, a solid team overall. I probably wouldn't put it in the A tier, holding it back. Uh, I should probably edit that out. Um, stupid wolf. Uh, yeah, it's because of the Pokemon holding it back. Uh, we're not going to put him in the A tier, but I think he's probably a fair B tier pick, in my opinion. Next up, we have Bianca, who has a cool team. Uh, another Gen 5 exclusive team, another Semipore team. I think they have the other monkeys as well, but I thought Semipore... I thought this version was the strongest. Um, similar to the last team, you have Superior and Semipore, but we also have Stoutland, Musharna, Chandler, and Mianxiao. So this team is interesting. Um, you have a really solid Trick Room mode here. You have... Well, no, you have really good support to set Trick Room and Musharna and Chandler and Fake Out. Um, however, like, you don't really have that much that takes advantage of it in Trick Room. So you might want to do, like... Chandelier and Trick Room. You could do, like, Trick Room Chandelier, or maybe you just use Imprison to stop um, Chandelier, or just to stop Trick Room. The thing about this team is, like, it just doesn't have a lot of offense outside of, like, Superior. And, like, Superior is not a very offensive Pokemon in its base for me. It has to set up first in order to, uh, to, like, actually become powerful. And so, um, yeah, like, you just don't have a lot of immediate offensive pressure. Stoutland Masharna actually got second at US Nationals, um, losing to your boy. In finals, uh, and so like in, two, in 2011, in a meta game where this is like doable, uh, Miancho was actually pretty good in 2011 as well as with Chandelure. So this is like four Pokemon that were actually like good in 2011, um, and with Contrary Superior would have been very good as well. It just wasn't legal back then. So overall, like it's a good team. I think it's also a B tier team personally. That's not right. I keep forgetting they're not there. Yeah, yeah. I think it's a B tier team. I don't have that much to say about it. Next up, we have Hugh. Who has, uh, this is Black 2, White 2, so he has Unfazant, Simiseer, Bofalant, Superior, Electros, and Flygon. I'm gonna be honest, the only good Pokemon on this team are, like, Flygon and Superior. Um, in Black and White 2, we no longer have the rule that it's only Gen 5 Pokemon, so Hugh, like, decides he wants to do all Gen 5 Pokemon, and then is like, oh, I'll add Flygon too. Um, he's got two snakes, which is interesting. However, like, Electros was good in 2011, but, like, if you're playing with past metagames, or like Black 2, White 2 Pokemon, there's a lot of better Pokemon that are in the game that are not Flygon, and not like these Pokemon. First of all, we have two terrible Pokemon, and Unfazant and Simiseer. Then Bofalon, who's like, okay if you get the speed control, and then like a limited metagame, but he's not playing in as limited of a metagame, and... Yeah. It's not terrible, like, the Pokemon he has, like, Bofalon can be okay, Electros can be okay, Superior can be okay, Flygon can be okay, Simiseer and Unfazant are bad. Um... But, like, the, there's no Pokemon that are that much better than just okay. You know, Flygon and Superior are the best Pokemon on this team, and they're both kind of mid-tier. So, for that reason, I think he was probably a C-tier. Like, it's not he has, like it's not terrible. Like, it's clear he tried, he just failed, you know? Next up, we have Callum from X and Y. I don't remember anything about this dude. 
Um, but his Pokemon only have three attacks. His Pokemon only have three attacks. Um, the Asta Clefable, Flareon, Absol, Altaria, and Greninja. Greninja and Clefable are the best Pokemon on this team. Absol, Meowstic, Altaria, and Flareon are all overall pretty weak. This team is really lacking in offense. Like, you have Greninja, which does damage, and, like, it can be okay, albeit gimmicky, with, um, Protean, in my opinion. Or maybe not gimmicky, but inconsistent. Um, however, with Dynamax, Greninja is actually pretty good. Like, you could do Greninja Clefable, and that would be kind of strong. However, other than that, like, Flareon, you don't normally want. Altaria, you don't normally want without its Mega Stone. Absol, you definitely don't want. And then, like, it just leaves Meowstic as, like, a prankster support Pokemon, which is good for sure, but you basically have two support Pokemon, one sweeper, and then three things that do nothing. So, overall, I wouldn't want this team. I'm going to put it in the C tier. Who is that? I have no idea who Callum is, by the way. Like, I don't, I like, I have no idea what role he plays or anything. Is he just, like, I have no idea. Um, moving on, we have Shauna, who has brought Delcaddy, Gudra, and Greninja. So, I could not have told you Shauna's name. I I'm not even sure I could have recognized her as, like, a Pokemon player. Or a Pokemon character. She's D tier easy. Like, what is this? Doubles is four versus four, so, like, already I'm going to knock you, but, like... Why? Like, like I actually don't understand. Like, I actually genuinely don't understand what she's doing. And the rest of them aren't much better. Tierno. He only has three Pokemon, but his Pokemon are better. How can I put this anything other than D tier? You've crawled on Talonflame and Roserade. He really... I mean, he, he got Fire, Water, Grass. Jeez. Um. Wait, they gave us Roserade only Petal... Are you guys seeing this? Wait, does Shauna hang on? Okay, at least she has... At least she has four moves on two of her Pokemon. Did, were they afraid he'd be too strong? Oh my god, you're actual garbage. Okay, our next three... Okay, this one I can work with. Florgis, Orange for me, Aerodactyl, and Raichu. <sighs> Why are there... You know what? Just because I can't give them all just for having three Pokemon, I'll put, I'll put this dude a little higher. He's okay. Like, Aerodactyl Raichu is okay, I guess? Le I mean, you can at least nuzzle Rock Slide or Thunder Wave Rock Slide and just flinch and para-flinch everyone and make them mad. You're not gonna win, but, like, you might make them mad, which is a moral victory. I don't know. I don't know what to make of this at all. Actual Garbaggio. What on earth is this? <laughs> Why do they all have three Pokemon? Oh my god. Okay, moving on. Alright. We're done with that. Wait, is that everybody? Yeah, okay. We're done with, we're done with X and Y. That was painful. Okay, cool. How? So how has Leafeon, Incineroar, Noivern, Crabominable, Tauros, and Alolan Raichu? Overall, I think this is a solid team. Um, Incineroar is a great Pokemon. Noivern gives you Talon support for an over, like otherwise like mid-speed team with Incineroar, Leafeon, and Crabominable. Raichu Alola is really fast. Um, and actually, in Dynamics metagame, can actually set up like Electric Terrain to double its speed or its Psychic Terrain to um, give itself a boost. However, it can't do both at the same time, but that's I guess that's fine. Um... Yeah, Leafeon plus Incineroar. Like, I think on this team, you probably have offensive Incineroar, not support Incineroar. Um, Tauros doesn't do that much, but at least it has Intimidate, so that's, like, somewhat helpful. Um, yeah. Uh, Crabominable is good anti-trick room. Actually, Crabominable is actually super hard. Like, I would always lose to one in the ladder uh, last generation, just because, like, it, the power is insane, and... If you want, and with Iron Fist, it, yeah, just does ridiculous damage. And, like, if you run Choice Band on it, it's actually really strong. So, I think this team is alright. Like, it's definitely not great. It was not an A-tier team, but it's not a C-tier team either. Therefore, by powers, by, uh, the powers of my deductive reasoning, it's a B-tier team. I am a genius. Okay, cool. Gladion. So, Gladion has a cool team. He's kind of, like, it's an edgy team. He's got Crobat, Zoroark, Porygon Z, Lucario, Blastoids, and Silvalli Grass, which is interesting. I have a personal uh, history with Savali Grass. Um, Crobat's really good for speed control. Porygon Z makes a lot of use of speed control as well. I feel like Porygon Z Crobat actually looks really nice because you can like just uh, do adaptability max normal off of Hyper Beam with like Life Orb and just destroy everything. You also like having Zorark is always good because it just forces you to play mind games like against your, like or like it forces your opponent to play mind games because like oh they'll like oh like I will uh, I'm not gonna fighting move this Crobat because. You know, it's a poison type. Or like, oh, he's a psychic move with this crowback because it's weak to it. And then it's Zorark. You know, it just forces mind games. Um, not great in Trick Room, but Porygon Z... Like, you at least have stuff to stop Trick Room going up between Crobat and Zorark. Because, like, you know, if you just max Darkness... Oh my god, max Zorark is going to be so funny. That's actually so funny. I just realized that. Um, yeah, you can Dynamax your Zorark and then, like, max Darkness right away into a psychic Ghost-type Trick Room setter. You also have Taunt. Um, 
yeah blastoise can run shell smash though you don't really have support for it so lolly can run explosion which is actually pretty good um and you can run any typing that you feel like you're missing so overall i think this team is actually pretty good i was originally gonna put it in b tier but the more i look at it i actually think it's an a tier team like i yeah i think i think that one's actually pretty solid personally next up we have hoop who has um double snorlax inteleon corvacanite and zashian so unfortunately he only has five pokemon his typing also is not really good um he has two normal types um a fairy steel or maybe a fa uh, steel fighting is the other one um the thing is that like corviknight snorlax and double like none of them hit steel types in fact none of his pokemon hit steel types um at all except for inteleon who's very frail like if the opponent had like a, an iron defense corviknight i think hop would just lose insta which is unfortunate like he definitely missed the lesson on, on typing he probably has the other starters as well but i think inteleon is the best one for him i guess you could have cinderachi but it's just not very good um yeah it's unfortunate this team isn't great like you can do some interesting stuff with it like corviknight and zacian are very strong although you assume other people can also have zacian and zamazenta if he does um yeah like yeah like i said like snorlax and double they're like both good setup pokemon if you have the support for it like you can run cotton guard bo uh, body press and double or body uh belly drum or curse and snorlax but like he just doesn't have the support for it and there's no like reason for anyone to not target down his pokemon also like he's super weak to haze with all these setup pokemon and then inteleon being the exception to the rule isn't great because like it it's, it's so frail so yeah i think hop is probably c tier i thought he's gonna be higher when i first glanced at this list but yeah he's probably c tier um second to last we have bede bede has gmax hatterini gardevoir mawile sylveon and rapidash it's like a cool theme team but it's not a cool like team team you know what i'm saying um hatterini's great but the rest of these pokemon are really lacking uh still no sorry sylveon's good as well and gardevoir's okay um it's not the worst team we've seen but it's certainly not the best like if you get trick room up you can do some like three like i don't know gmax hatterini and trick room is actually pretty threatening um and sylveon's a good pokemon but yeah like you play against a steel type and i don't know what you do that being said uh gmax hatterini has like maxed flare and stuff so it's not like it's an instant loss but it's not easy either we're gonna put bede in c tier um, and last but not least, Marnie and her Murpico. Lipart, Toxicroak, Scrafty, Grimstone, and Murpico. It's almost a mono dark type team. Um, similar to Bede, who has all fairy type Pokemon. Uh, this team is extremely weak to fairy type Pokemon. Fighting is difficult as well. GMX Grimstone is a much worse Pokemon than um, GMX Hatterini. A much worse Dynamax Pokemon, I should say, or Gigantamax Pokemon. Lipart, like, you have, you have four, you have five fake out users, but no support. Like, nothing that you want to, like, support it with um you have intimidate which is good you have more pico which can be okay um you have toxic Rook, which isn't good like library like doesn't really support anything here this is a pretty bad team i'm gonna be honest it's definitely c or d tier i kind of want to put her in d tier honestly is that too is that are people gonna be mad about that they probably are they realistically probably are hmm can I put her in D tier? She's certainly not. You know, she's certainly better than these clowns. I think she's a C tier. Like, no, but what do they have a fairy type? I mean, well, we put BD in C tier. The thing is that BD had speed control. Marty doesn't have speed control. She doesn't have anything. I honestly think Marty's team is D tier. I'm sorry. People are going to be mad about it because people like Marty. That's a D tier drainer if I've ever seen one. Um. Yep. And that's what I have to say on the subject of the uh, the rivals. So, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this uh, video. Thank you so much for subscribing. Uh, as a reminder, please subscribe to the channel. Uh, maybe you'll show up in a video, but probably not because those emotes, those uh, that notification is for Twitch, Twitch subs. Um, but yeah. Anyway, I think that's all I have to say about that. Uh, thanks for watching. Let me know what you want to see me tier next. We're gonna have a lot of tier list videos this week. That's the plan at least. So, um, yeah, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. Goodbye.